Hey folks, Patrick Kelleher, author of The Four-Headed Monster of Estate Planning in Elder Law. You can pick up a copy on Amazon or on our website, elderlawcare.com. Folks, today's question is, how do you file a lawsuit when the, you suspect elder abuse? Oftentimes, folks, sadly to say, elder abuse is often at the hands of their own family members. Oftentimes, stereotypical case from my experience might be an adult son or daughter that's living with an aging parent and they are taking advantage of the situation. They may even be a fiduciary, maybe their financial power of attorney, and they have access to their parents' checkbook and they're writing checks to themselves, they're buying themselves gifts, they're living their lifestyle based off of their parents' checkbook. And that would be considered financial exploitation. So if you suspect an elder abuse or elder neglect case, you want to report it to protective elder services in your community as soon as possible. And of course, you want to verify, clarify that your suspicions are meritorious or they have merit. And if you think that your loved one may be in harm's way physically uh, or even emotionally, you may even want to consider reporting it to the local police if you think it's a more serious case where you think they might be in harm's way, either through neglect or abuse um, physically. Um, so you really need to protect our elders. Uh, they are a vulnerable, uh, susceptible segment of the population. And so if you, if you suspect uh, elder abuse, uh, you wanna take action first and foremost, and you wanna um, verify, clarify that your suspicions are legitimate and valid and once you have enough information, you want to take action with elder services in your community and maybe even law enforcement as well. And oftentimes you might be referred, referred to the probate court to take on formal probate proceedings for things like conservatorship so you can legally step in the shoes of your elderly incapacitated loved one, they are the protected person, so you can help them manage their financial affairs, take control of their finances and manage them for them and keep any of the um, people away from them who might be trying to exploit them financially. Also, you may want to petition the probate court for, for a formal proceeding called guardianship as well. So you can make their medical health care decisions for them, make sure that they get in proper care medically uh, from their medical providers as well. So these are things to be on the lookout for. And if you have a loved one who you feel has been changed and they're not answering their door or their telephone or showing up for doctor's appointments, they might be red flags to uh, be an impetus for you to start to investigate a little bit further. But from my experience, without the formal adjudication of a conservatorship at the probate court or a guardianship at the probate court, you may not have a lot of legal rights. So keep those in your back pocket. And they are things that you want to enact as the last resort as well. We wanna give our elders as much autonomy and independence as possible as their age and in place with the least invasive action. However, there are times when those Formal proceedings are certainly appropriate. The best time for my recommendation is if you can have your elder meet with their elder law attorney when they're alive and well, maybe third quarter of life, maybe early fourth quarter of life, where they can pick up a pen when they still possess what they call testamentary capacity, and they can appoint you or another suitable family member or loved one as their attorney in fact under their durable financial power of attorney so that you can step into their shoes and manage their financial affairs should they become completely incapacitated and they should also create a comprehensive healthcare proxy with other advanced directives so you can legally step into their shoes as their healthcare agent to avoid expensive guardianship proceedings at the probate court as well. That would be the first line of the fence. Make sure you're aging loved one meets with their qualified elder law attorney to put the proper disability planning in place. If you would like to read an article on this, I drafted an article for South Shore Senior Newspaper a few years ago called The Big Six Disability Planning. You can Google elder law attorney Patrick Kelleher, Big Six Disability Planning, because you will learn about, in my opinion, the big six disability tools that your loved one ought to have in their elder law toolbox or treasure chest. Hey folks, Elder Law Attorney Patrick Kelleher. If you found this video helpful, please scroll down, 
leave a comment, or post a question. If you would like to learn more, go to our website, elderlawcare.com, click on the blogs, the video, or Elder Law Academy, because there are programs there that we created, at-home educational programs that will teach you how to slay the metaphorical four-headed beast, probate court, estate death tax, financial creditors, creditors and predators, and that $15,000 per month nursing home. Thanks for joining us today at elderlawcare.com. We'll see you next time.